how that way I don't have to. I still. There we go. Well, how about we start this week with the most dangerous prayer you can pray? God, as we come before you this evening, we pray that you use us in any way you want to. And we pray that we would listen to you. And when you tell us that you want us to do something, we will do it. God, would you just use this podcast, use this time together to uh, build us up and also build up the community around us, make us stronger believers. I think we lost it for a second. <laughs> Amen. 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 Weird. So, uh, who's we're doing? Uh, I think we're going to kick off tonight with two truths and a lie. Wait, so, who wants our, to go? Where's our introduction? Ah, oh, so I got cut off already. So I'm just going to go right in and say, here we are. We're so happy to have you here. Come join us. Thanks, Dave, for cutting me off. Jason, thanks for joining us. Sean, love you, brother. Thank you for everything. Today, we are going to talk Christian movies because we all love our Christian movies. Maybe not Dave. We'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. But uh, today, we're going to be discussing God's Not Dead 1, God's Not Dead 2, God's Not Dead 3, War Room. What a great movie that was. And if we have a little bit of time, maybe we'll throw in Courageous in there. And then we're going to actually try to discuss a Christian movie each week for about a little short amount of time. So if you want to chime in, you guys can watch it. We could all discuss it as a group. Also, we're going to kick it over to Dave now because he is – no, wait. We're not doing the game first. We're doing Dave first, right? Well, man, I, I just feel like we should turn back the clock because I think I screwed up everything here. Well, the whole way, you were <laughs> blank without the prayer, during the prayer. I just got all confused. Yeah, my, my phone glitched out during the prayer. It's, it's weird. We don't, we don't actually have that many problems doing this whole, doing this whole tele Zoom thing, except my phone's freaking out right now. So, all right, so let's just go to two truths or a lie. Two truths or a lie? We're going to go there? Two truths or a lie. Yeah, I think we're going to do some two truths and a lie right now. So... What? All right, let's do, let's do two truths first. and a lie. I'm going to kick us off with two truths and a lie. So, two truths and a lie. Here are my three things. One, I've never been arrested. Two, I've been shot. Three, I've been skydiving. Two truths and a lie. You figure it out. Wow, yours is a lot more exciting than mine. Say that again. Yeah. yeah he, he's, he, he's, he's reversing words, so it's a tricky. I have never been arrested. Both. Two, I have been shot. Three, I have been skydiving. People at home, feel free to chime in on which one you think is the lie. I mean, yeah, when's this, me, when, when's this going to be? When are we answering all these? Well, I guess we can well, answer what, it right now for him. I, I'm going to say Sean has never been skydiving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that Sean has never been skydiving as well, although. I think the other two, although unexpected, I think those, I think the red herring is the shot, is never been shot. Well, the which first I'm, one he said he's never. True, I need a story. <laughs> he's never been arrested. All right, Jason. I'll, I'll go with the arrested. He's never been arrested. I think that's. All right, so. Two of you think I have been, I've been skydiving, and one of you think I haven't, I've been arrested. No, I don't think you've been skydiving. I think that's a lie. That's what I'm saying. Two of you think I, I've never I've, – Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, all the bad things I've ever done, number one is true. I have never been arrested for anything that I've ever done. Number two, yes, I have been shot. In, I, I knew that. I was not a good person. And I was uh, in the middle of a drug deal and it went sideways and people started shooting and I got shot in the thigh and then had to have some older guy in the group I was with pull it out with a pair of pliers so my parents wouldn't find out. Um, so I have been shot, but no, I have never been skydiving, although I would love to do it someday. You look like Let's a person that would have got shot. That's why I didn't say that. Yeah, I mean, I can show you guys this car. It's, it's actually, the car's almost gone. I mean, I was like 14, so. Just just know. from knowing you, I'm surprised you didn't get shot today. I'm surprised I don't get shot almost every day. I have a big mouth, so I'm surprised that doesn't like a regular occurrence. <laughs> All right, Jason, you're up. Two truths and a lie. 
This I was fed by a murderer. I was I was fed my food by murder. Mur. I ate octopus, and I love I'm loving life right now. I think you <laughs> never had <laughs> octopus. <laughs> I'm gonna say you you've never had octopus. Yeah, I'm gonna go with octopus too. I'm gonna go with octopus. You know what I have to go with? I'm not loving life is the lie. I mean the, the truth. I I I the truth. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I was fed by murder. I did eat octopus. And loving life, got it. That's it. Wait, you said you're loving life, right? Yep. So that's the truth. No, right now I'm not because I'm hating it. I'm hating it, all this stuff that's going on. All this stuff that's going on. I, 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 that's, that's not, I, I want it all. It's, it's not right right now. Because I'm not loving life right now. I got you. Yeah, my brother. Brother. All right. All right. Dave, you want to go or you want me to go? I'll go. Mine's pretty boring. <laughs> Talk for a minute, though. Let the folks at home get a chance to answer. Like, the answers are coming in because, don't forget, they're on a little bit of a delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. we got to be more considerate to our uh, All right. our fans. My, fir- my first truth lie is I have owned 48 cars in my life. True. I, ha- I have owned 48 cars in my life. Number two for the truth lie is I have read the Bible cover to cover. And my third truth lie is I canceled my unnecessary paid Zoom subscription today. Oh, this is terrible. That's well, awesome. well, well, let's let's let the folks at home answer real quick while I say something. He was doing something while we were having our meeting. He was, you know, so, so, so it could be a trick. It could be a trick. He, he did have that stack of bills in his hand. So you're telling, you oh, really I'm not, think. I haven't answered yet. I haven't answered yet. I'm letting the folks really know. Think yeah, after, yeah, letting the four folks weeks of, after four weeks of saying I was going to cancel that subscription, you really think I did it today during the, our pre-show meeting? Why would you put that as one of your things? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go with, I don't think, that he has read the Bible cover. Yeah, that's what I think so too. I don't think he's read the Bible straight through. What do you think, Jay? I'm going with the Bible. All right, it's a unanimous vote. Dave has not read the Bible cover to cover. Wait, 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 wait hold on. So Bonnie goes Bible, Crystal goes Everybody, Bible. everybody on wow, there. Everybody's Betty, Betty, with Zach, read the Bible. Yeah, Crystal, Bonnie, everybody. He's not read the book, Bible. All of us. It's a unanimous decision. Okay, so, so that's – that's the lie. That's I think, the lie. I don't think you've read the Bible cover to cover. I have owned almost 90 cars in my life. That was the lie. No. I said I said you I owned 48. 48 cars. Okay. Well, now that being said, the begotten and the begotten, I definitely skimmed the begotten and the <laughs> So that's two lies. Nobody reads truth. the genealogy. I'm guilty too. I don't no, read. I, I, I mean, I, I read, read it, time. but I, I, I mean, my eyes looked at it, but I didn't absorb it. Yeah, Pete I thought we knows it by memory. Pastor Pete's really kissing your butt tonight, Dave. He yeah, believes oh, and you. by the way, that's extra, a- cre- <laughs> extra credit for Tom. I totally canceled my Zoom subscription while we were having that meeting. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Extra credit for Tom because I was like, oh, this will be a good one. They won't get it because I literally had just told you that I hadn't canceled it. And I went in and I canceled it. Extra credit for Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Uh, hey, I like my buddy Brian James just put a, I, I crashed at least uh, 48 cars. We did derby cars. We did about that many derby cars. Yeah, I, I have a thing for cars, and I, I buy a lot Did you have a lot, though? Were you a car salesman? Did you have a lot? Did you own a lot? Or you just own 90 cars? Yep. Where'd you keep them? Yeah. It, so I have this weird thing where if, like, I see a deal, I just buy it. And so, <laughs> uh, there, there, I mean, there's been several years where I've had probably 10 cars in a year. Did you give yeah. a deal on your new Pathfinder that just got smashed that you spent all that time working on? First of all, that's a lie. It's a, it's a Toyota 4Runner. It's not a Pathfinder. 4Runner, excuse me. 
And no, it's still sitting in my garage, smashed to pieces. I got to find a shop that'll fix it. Uh, oh, wow. All right. Let's uh, here's my three. Ready? Ready. Ready. Uh-oh, did we lose him? Ready? Oh, man. We, I yeah, we're ready. We're waiting on you, buddy. Yeah, you didn't lose me. I'm here. Can you I, just me? Realized, I just realized when Tom did that little little face he just did, he looked like Uncle Jesse from Full House. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what face he's talking about. He did that little, you know, but, you know, the way Tom did it. All right, so I drove a trash truck for a living. I preached from a high school talent show. Ooh. I went on a missionary trip to Trinidad. Ooh. All right, Trinidad's a wait, weird... Wait, 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 let the people answer. You guys can, yeah, let, let, you can talk about well, we it. We can discuss. We don't have to answer yet. We can discuss. Yeah, can discuss. Let them discuss. Okay, so the first one was you drove a trash truck for a living. Yes. Yeah. Second one was you preached for a high school talent show. Yes. Third one is you went to a missions trip to Trinidad. Hey, Betty, what's your guess? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad of the delay now. Deep won't laugh out loud, Tom. I know. As we anxiously wait the uh, – the um, there you go. I'm there going go. with – I'm going with – Oh, yeah, I could, was that – you could have given us an, a, a guess, too. That would have been all right. My all right, sister right. won't answer. Good for you, sis. I'm going. I'm going with uh, you didn't preach because you you wouldn't do that in high school. You wouldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, but but Jason, I think I think that's the kicker. Why would he say it was for a high school talent show? Because he because he wouldn't he wouldn't do it. He drove a trash truck and he's been to Trinidad because of his dad. My dad's and never been to I, Trinidad. Trinidad is a weird place to come up with for a lie. You'd say China. You'd say a lot of things, but Trinidad is a weird place. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man, because there's a lot of missions. His dad, his dad has helped a lot of people. His dad worked with Liberty Ministries. He was in Guatemala. They, 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 they do uh -huh. a lot of things. Um, his dad has a history. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, uh, he he did Trinidad. Oh, that's a tough. It's like the worst one. Like I think you have the hardest one, Tom. I'm I'm back. I'd rather back get in. shot right now than answer this question. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna back Crystal. Crystal goes trash truck. I'm going with Crystal. I'm saying trash truck. And Bonds is talent show. Talent show, Sean. Um, I think I'm wrong, but I'm going talent show. Talent show. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba. I've never preached on a talent show. I mean, See, he told you. Talent show. Don't, wait, why wait. would he come up with preaching on a talent show? That's the whole point of this game, to, to, to make it as hard as possible. Listen, I want to, to say something real quick. I want to cut you off. I went there for uh, a uh, summer. Okay. Our, I built dormitories for uh, – our, our servant's on. Our, huh? our servant has joined us, I believe. Oh, Pastor, Pastor Carrie Willis is here. I didn't even yes, see him. Yes, Pastor Carrie has joined us. So, hey, Pastor Carrie, I can't wait to talk to you next week. So let's go back to me, back to me. All right, so back to Tom. Let Tom have his moment in the sun. <laughs> so, so hold on. I know this is my Uncle Roger asking, how many speeds does a trash truck have, Tom? They're all different. How many speeds? Well, how many did yours have? Was it an automatic or was it a stick shift? No, it was stick shift. Did you drive the truck? I had a double clutch. I know that. Man, I was young. I was like 20. What? You got your wallet stolen on the way to Trinidad? Yeah, your sister, dude. Your oh, said your wallet got stolen. No! So the church, real quick story. So the church, raised, the church raised all this money for me for the missions trip. And I got on the bus. We were on the way to Florida to go on boot camp for two, two weeks before we go to Trinidad. And on the way down, I stopped to call my parents. And I left my wallet on top of the phone. And then the bus took off. And I, all the money for the whole summer, I left on top of the phone, right? So I probably wow. lost somebody. So I started praying. When, by the time I got down to Florida, the, 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 the other teenagers on the bus from their own pockets raised more money than I originally had going down to Florida. God is so wow, good. That's amazing. That is wow. amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. 
yeah, dude, they just came. They, they didn't know me. They had no idea who I was. They just picked me up in King of Prussia, and we kept stopping at other states, picking up people on the way to Florida. Yeah, Pastor wow. Pete said, Pastor Pete said, maybe Tom's, on a tr- uh, Tom's from Trinidad on a mission trip to the USA. <laughs> I, I, I'm like Fez from the 70s show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a new segment in the uh, Prodigal Sons podcast. We're going to do the weekly news wrap-up, and for this week, we're going to go to Sean. Sean, what's this week's new, uh, oh, weekly boy, news wrap-up? <laughs> Stay home. Wear a mask. That's it. Okay, and now I'm going to do the weather. Still COVID-19 outside with a slight chance of murder hornets. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so, so that's how you brought it up? That's how you brought it up. That's how you yeah. brought it in. That's how you got it in there. I had to get murder hornets in the first 15 minutes of this show. Anybody out there listening, do you guys know what the murder hornets are? Just out of curiosity. I'm pretty sure what's Crystal what's does because she's the one who enlightened me to this whole murder hornet situation. All right, so besides Crystal. Well, now, we, now we know where they came from, Crystal. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Crystal, those murder hornets don't look like a cute, cuddly pet no matter what you think. Yeah, go, go round them up. Bring them back home. Put them back in whatever cage you're supposed to be in. We don't want them. We've had enough this year. Yeah, I. If a yellow jacket stings me, I'll blow up to like like last time I got stung in the hand. My hand blew up to like four times its original size. I don't want to know what a murder hornet's gonna do. I hope I hope it kills me. Let's put it that way. I don't know if I can make it through another sting. I, last time I was hit with 31 ground hornets. They came out of the ground and hit me 31 times, and I don't know. They said if I ever got stung again, I might not make it. So, I uh, thank God I have not been stung again, so I don't know if I'll make it. You only have one sting left in you? That's they it, say once. once you're stung, it, like, it, it can affect you so bad that like, it causes you to uh, be – Every time I get to... stung, it's worse than the time before. That's how yep. – I've only and been stung I... once. I got ran. I ran over. I was I was working up at the church camp in upstate New York, uh, the Nazarene church camp up there. And I ran over. I was mowing the grass one day. I ran over one of those uh, wasp nests, and I got stung like twenty eight times in my legs. So, That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with oh, you. I'm the only one that didn't know what it was either. Pastor Pete asks, "Who's fact checking this stuff?" I'm not sure if he's talking about our two truths and a lie, or the murder hornets. Yeah, I don't know. The murder hornets, I just found out about tonight during our production meeting. Yeah, no, they're coming around. It's all over. Crystal, they are not fluffy. They look like Bumblebee with his attack mask on. They are not fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we get into the movies, I just want to – something. something's bugging me. Something's on my chest. I want to get it off my chest. Jason already ran away. Yeah, Jason, he's done. He's gone. Yeah, I saw a mur- murder hornet. He's running. <laughs> but the uh something i want to get off my chest that i just want to i just want to like i just want to slap around some christians here for a second if you don't mind yesterday i saw something that was really disturbing uh i saw somebody who's been a christian for several decades get into an argument with a non-christian over politics and i just man that just that just really messed me up for a couple hours because i was just like I guess what kept running through my head was that uh, the, the Christian guy was trying to tell the, the, the atheist that, that President Trump was going to save us all. And my, my thing is like, that Christian guy will probably never meet President Trump. He doesn't really know who he, who he is or what he's like. I mean, you can have your opinions. That's fine. You can vote. That's what this country is about. But my point was the, the non-Christian guy, the atheist, that he's trying to like share President Trump with, there's a really good chance that guy will never meet President Trump either. But he is going to meet Jesus. And I just, I just think it was the, I'm sorry to get off topic here and kind of get like upset, but I think there's a really good, there was a really good opportunity there that the Christian guy could have talked to the atheist about Jesus rather than President Trump. And I think we're, I just, I hate seeing when you miss opportunities. When Christ gives you an opportunity, the, the atheist guy was scared. He was, he was worried about COVID, and he could have easily, you know, I just, I think, I think the Christian guy missed an opportunity. And I just wanted to, to sh- give a little bit of a encouragement to our Christian listeners out there to spread peace, not, 
not politics. Does that make sense? It makes a whole lot of sense. Okay. I didn't mean to derail the show. I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, speaking of, of Christian things, you know, when you commit to something and you don't stick to it, that might be something you want to talk about. Well, no, no, no. See, see, Sean, when you say we, <laughs> what happens when you commit to something and you really give it your all, and then you just fail because you're an utter failure in life. And you're not I mean, giving there's it your be all. Some, isn't, that, isn't that where grace comes in? That, that is where grace comes in, and, I, and I'll give it to you. Uh, I, I think you did amazing for your first time. <laughs> I totally uh, forgot we were going to talk about this. Okay, so let <laughs> I thought that was a good way to transition about. over. <laughs> they have no idea what you're talking about. Good job, Sean. Do you want to explain it or do you want me to explain it? So basically on Saturday, I know Sean fasts on Saturdays and I text him at like six o'clock in the morning. I texted you, Sean, and I said, are, are you fasting today? And a little while later, he comes back on and says, yeah, of course. And I said, I'm with you, brother. Solidarity. I'll fast with you today. Uh, I made it to 530. PM? PM? I will give you credit, and you did you did text me like five thirty two, like, dude, I didn't make it. Like, <laughs> you were, really, I could feel it in the text that you were very upset that you had not gone. But you hey, know you know what it was? I, go ahead, Tom. Meanwhile, I was tempting Sean with ice cream. I was tempting <laughs> Sean with pizza. I was tempting Sean with delicious hot dogs. Soup. Soup. There was candy oh, on the soup. counter. But, it, was, and, but but here was the thing. All that stuff was there. And what did I – I was like, you know what? I got to stay strong because Dave is joining me today in this oh, bath. No! So I got I to gotta stay <laughs> strong. That makes it so much worse. See, the Tom being the devil on your shoulder, Sean, uh, was, was only second to the devil I had on my shoulder, which was me. Which, oh, which, was, which was the carries backing you up, Dave? Yep. No, see, I, I was, I was letting you guys talk. Um, I actually, I, I, it depends on when you do it. There's actually a certain time, like you can eat before, especially I know the Muslim faith because of me being in jail. Muslims like they eat before sunset and after sun, or sunrise and sunset. Yeah, but the sun was still up for Dave. I, see, this see, is very what, true. It was very sunny out at five thirty. See, I was waiting before Pastor Kerry said something. I was leaving it a go because he gave up at five thirty, and I know at five thirty I was almost home, and it was still sunny because they actually started cruising High Street at six, and the sun was still out. So yeah, you lost that one. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a pretty busy day. And there was a lot of a lot, a lot of things going on, and I had the three kids, and I was, I, you know, it was that little bit of doubt that started creeping into my head of whether or not I was going to be able to make it. And I was like, No, Tom, it's like this. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It, it's the world's smallest violin. <laughs> Listen, brother, I still give you credit. You jumped in with me, and I appreciate it. Um, well, I, ha I do have to ask you though. That does lead the question: How in the world do you do you fast? until Sunday morning or what do you do? Uh, normally. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while, like if I'm up at midnight, still working on a project for school, I'll eat like a banana or something after midnight, but I make midnight my, my marker point. Because I was thinking I might do it again and do what pastor Terry was saying from, well, actually uh, he can chime in here again. Well, he did say it was sun, did. sunset somewhere. He well, and he just well, chimed back in. And he said, whenever he fasts, he doesn't tell anyone. So we shouldn't be talking about it anyway. But okay, um, he's sure. saying sunrise to sunset. And it's always sunrise sunset to sunset. somewhere. So I thought what I might do is 24 hours, but sunset to sunset. So, so Friday night to Saturday night. Because my thing was, I didn't know if I'd be able to like deal with the kids, get them all ready for bed, and then be able to go to sleep myself being – I'm just a loser. I'm sorry. But see, no, 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 see, no, no, no. We just Pastor, like to rib Pastor each other. Right. Fine. You have to. It, it's it is first of all, and and to be to be honest with you, as, as um, I was I I will say I was blessed to be in jail. 
So I met men in jail that were actually fasting and there were so many different ways to do it. So you have to, you, you, first of all, you can't, you can't announce it. It's the same thing when you're, when you're fasting, you should look good to people when you're stepping outside. You don't want to sit there and look down on people, even though like Tom was trying to do, get Sean to eat ice cream and stuff like that. I was right along with him saying, you know, I eat hot dogs and stuff like that. But it's something that you do for yourself. And you really should do it on your own because it's really a time for like Sean. It's the time to be one with the Lord. It's something that like you're just devoting yourself to him and, and doing more, even like us reading the Bible. You, when we donate our time that he gives us to breathe, that time in the morning with me, 20 minutes, an hour, all day, that's our time with him. It's just like with Sean doing the fasting. Um, some people eat, don't eat. Some people only drink water. Some people do. It's, 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 a, it's a whole thing. But as long as you commit something to the Lord, that's what you're committing in your fast, I believe. So the well, I, just can't, I just can't believe – I just can't believe how upset Sean got with me after that with the text that he kept sending me that you're a loser and you'll never be anything. You'll never amount to anything. Sean, you did? I mean, yeah, dude, you just got to, you got to learn how to get over that, man. You Dave, know? Dave saw it's those different. texts, but they were all in his own mind. He just assumed that that was what I was thinking on those days. I did not. I was like, listen, no worries. I said, Hey man, you, you made it to five, three. That's all. Like, I wouldn't give him a hard time over that. I know, and easy. that's what Sean. That's what made it so much worse is that you were like, "Yeah, it's cool, man. You tried. You did a like good job and all that." That's what made it so much worse. I I really wish you would have been like, you know, you're a loser. I can't believe you that's not it. how we do it, though. Listen, it's that's between you and God. Like I said, I when you texted and said, "Hey, you were doing it," and you knew because you know, I mean, this is an ongoing thing for me, and you guys know the story. But um, the fact that you you were you were given a shot and God had led you to it, and you and you made it. Listen, that's awesome. Following where God's leading, I, I can never fault somebody for trying something that God's led them to. Well, we'll see how it goes again this week, and I guess now we'll we'll be doing. So I was going to say, now that God led you to do update. that, how are you going to do next week? Well, you you know I'm going to have to get it done, right? <laughs> Listen, you're not talking to Sean or I picking on you. You're talking to the Lord and what you need to do. So I would suggest just just do it and just just don't tell us until we find out and pick on you next week. Exactly. As I'm having some tripod issues here, as you can. Yeah. Imagine. What does that mean? These guys have to pick for prodigal sons. Who just typed that? Pick. I said you guys have to pick on each other. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Gotcha. Uh, well, I guess we got to talk about some movies. Well, Dave's favorite subject in the whole entire world. The God's Not Dead series. So before we start this, um, oh boy. <laughs> he said, oh boy. So we were discussing movies one day, and God's Not Dead came up, and Dave just started acting up <laughs> and, 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 and just, just couldn't believe that we would even think of, of even mentioning that movie. So we decided, <laughs> you know what? That seems like a good topic. Let's talk about it. So um, we we're, we were, we mentioned last week we we advertised last week we we're going to be talking about the God's Not Dead trilogy, uh, one two three, which is what a trilogy is, and <laughs> we we would also probably uh, do a little bit of a review on War Room tonight, and we were talking about before the show that I was never very good at homework I always waited till the last minute so Lisa and I had a. Uh, had a uh, movie marathon last night after after I got done work and we had the kids after we fed them dinner and we stayed up till midnight watching movies. Uh, I still don't. I still dislike God's Not Dead <clears throat> just as much as ever. I really did like War Room first time I ever saw it. Um, but basically, my problem with the God's Not Dead series, especially two and three, but even one falls into this category. What are the, and, and I think any movie, especially a Christian movie, should have the, you should judge it based on like four criteria. criteria. I, I made some notes here. 
what are the movie's intentions and did they accomplish it? Is the setting, the plot, the script realistic? Could it happen? The third point would be how am I, the viewer, impacted by this movie in my particular uh, worldview? And how is my neighbor, the viewer, impacted by the movie? So in, what I want to do on is break it down by this. What are the movie's intentions? What should a Christian movie's intentions be? To glorify God, to, to raise up God, and to make people more interested in God, more, bring them closer, make the Christian closer to God and make the, the non-Christian curious about God, right? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Any, any problems so far? No, I, so far I can go with that. Is it realistic? Could it happen? Okay, so let's do it point by point. Uh, what are the movie's intentions and did they accomplish it? Did, they, did the God's Not Dead trilogy bring people closer to God? I would argue that it didn't. I would argue that what it did, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is drive a wedge between Christians and non-Christians. Okay, I so think that's, what the, that's the part I want you to explain because that's the part I don't understand. Okay, so pick a movie. Uh, pick two or three. We'll talk about it. God's Not Dead 2 or 3. I mean, it doesn't matter. Really. Let's go okay. three, that's been the biggest point of contention. Let's go with okay. Number three. God's not dead three. So plot recap. Uh, okay, now I'm confusing it with two. Plot recap. The, two okay. was the teacher saying about Jesus. Three was the church getting saved. Okay, so the the college campus wants the church off their property. The pastor gets arrested because he wouldn't give his sermon notes. And there's a riot between like the Christians and the non-Christian students, right? The thing that I don't get is it didn't seem very realistic. And so what it did was basically it made it into a protest between the Christians and the non-Christians, just like God's Not Dead 2 did, which is like this teacher who really didn't do anything wrong, who uh, all of a sudden is getting railroaded by the school district. And my thing was, instead of like, the whole, the whole name of the movie is God's Not Dead. They're trying to prove that God is alive. They didn't do that. Instead, what they did was prove that the teacher didn't do anything wrong. You know, and so basically, to me, it just seemed like they were fighting. The Christians and the non-Christians were fighting rather than trying to build up Christ and build up the gospel. I didn't see any of that in those movies. I just saw that they were trying to that Christians were being angry at non-Christians. So I'm, I'm going to step out of the box here. And so Tom, your father was pretty much, you were raised Christian. You, your, your dad was up there. Like he, he raised you Christian, correct? Correct. Dave, you were raised, your dad was pastoral. Sean, you were Catholic, but you were still raised. I, I didn't have that background. I just spoke to Pastor Pete on this yesterday because um, he didn't see some of the movies we discussed. I saw, and I was wondering what you guys were going to come up with in all three of these. I understand what you're saying, Dave, but in every movie, you're going to have a conflict of something, and some of them are just stupid. Like, like me growing up, I'm, I'm going to tell you how dumb I am. Um, so, like, I went to public school, which my my aunt or my uncle just posted something about it. So that happens in actual school. Like, I grew up, I was, I was not taught things. And because I didn't listen to my grandparents growing up and learning through all the Christian faith. There are stupid things. Like, I told Pastor Pete, and he can say if he's still watching, like, 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I thought like that's the first time that like they really built a boat. But then I read the I read the Bible, that was orc. I never even thought about how far back that was. Like here I am a dummy in a, in, in a public school not realizing that that was orc and and boats. So you're going to have idiots like in God's not dead 2 and 3 fighting over dumb stuff. 
Well, the, you, you say you say dumb stuff though, and my thing is they made this false pre. I guess what I should say about arguing is they made a false premise to promote an argument that actually has never happened in real life. You know, they take little bits of news stories and they turn them into this overblown thing that actually never happened. So, it's um, I, I want to read you a quote. Um, uh, da, ba, ba, ba. You know, this is from an article. In this, this is it from an article reviewing the God's Not Dead series, okay? I found this today and I wanted to read it to you. In this moment and a few others, it seems like God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness, is about to reevaluate the God's Not Dead series' own narrative about Christians in America. One that's been far more interested, the, the series has been far more interested in bolstering a certain sort of persecution complex rather than encouraging its audience towards Christ-like behavior. But in the end, God's Not Dead install this current God's Not Dead installment is just like the others, putting a pious face, but putting on a pious face, but failing to imagine what real sacrifice might look like. I would like to ask you what uh, left-wing, liberal, uh, atheistic uh, news uh, media wrote that what what uh, you know are we what newspaper or magazine wrote that article in which I just pulled that quote from this God's not dead installment is just like the others putting on a pious face but failing to imagine what real sacrifice might actually look like what what news media do you think that might be from I'll cut to it Christianity Today. That was written in Christianity Today about. Mr. Kerry Willis got that actually. Did he? I, I he had did. to click off of it. I had to click off of it to he read. He said that, Christianity Today. So. He he's obviously read that article. Yeah, it and and that movie bothered me. We we wa we watched it with the teens at church. That movie bothered me so bad when I walked out of that. Pastor Pete was there. He remembers. I talked to him the next day about it. It bothered me so much because. They make they, they invented these little wedges to shove between Christians and non-Christians, which at the end of the movie, uh, basically the Christians are, yay, we were victorious. We beat the non-Christians. That has nothing to do with what the point of a Christian movie, in my opinion, should be. It should be to reinf you know, reinforce Christ, introduce him to new people, show his love, show his mercy, show his grace. None of that happened in those movies. And so uh, my third point, real quickly, how am I, the viewer, impacted by this movie? If I'm a Christian, which I am, so how am I, the viewer, impacted by this movie? I leave a little bit angry, thinking that the, 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 the church is being persecuted. Um, how is my neighbor, the non-Christian, impacted by this movie? He thinks Christians are really wacky and thinks, you know, that they're out of touch with reality. We are out of it. Because I, I'll be honest with you, all those movies are the white, evangelical church in, Amer in America being persecuted. That really doesn't happen. It might happen in some other parts of the world. It really doesn't happen here. What I would like to, my, my thesis that I would like to propose about these movies is this. Um, the, in America, the white evangelical church is not being persecuted. They're disappearing because they're not willing to take a stand. If that movie was about Christians being lazy and not talking to non-Christians about Christ, not mirroring Christ to their neighbors, but rather getting into stupid political discussions, we could talk. We could have a movie about that. We could have a movie about people not willing to stand up and, and represent Christ in their neighborhoods, in their schools, in their churches. But no, that would be a tough movie where people would, where Christians would leave feeling like, they were guilty, feeling like they should do more. But instead, this is just a very cheesy, uh, cheap way to give to spoon feed Christians what they want to hear. Spoon feed the, ma the majority of Christians what they want to hear, and make them feel like that you know this feed them a false narrative of, of what's going on. I think there's a lot of good ways to do that. I, I think the the God's Not Dead series failed to accomplish it. So that's it. So let's Stepping talk off about my that. soapbox. Let's, let's talk about that. 
let's talk about that. So perspective, right? You watch the movie, you, you, you have your perspective on it. Other people got their perspective on it, right? So if we look at it as the trilogy, right? The first one involves the student. The second one involves the teacher. The third one involves the church, right? So in the first one, it's about the student completely. The second one is about the teacher completely. The third one's about the church, right? So in the first yeah, one, I think it just about, got, I think it got less realistic as it went on. Yeah, so so I could agree with that, right? But let's start with the first one. So here, I see a kid, a student, a young student, just fresh in college, going through a lot of adversity, a lot of people telling him don't do that, including his parents and his girlfriend of six years, right? Who, who they have their whole life planned in front of them. And yet he took it upon himself because everybody else was against him to go ahead and put his faith on God and do it anyway, right? So, and then we all know how the movie ends, right? So when you look at a movie, like, like, I think a lot of Christians, a lot of people try to add too many bells and whistles into opinions about movies. Um, for me, I, 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 like for this one, I, that's all I saw. I saw a student. And, and through that fight that he did, two people came to Christ, right? The, 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 yeah, the, the first one Christ. had some positive stuff going on. And, and then, I, 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 this is going to sound politically incorrect, but uh, that kid came to Christ. The, you know, he's Oriental. I'm not sure if that's politically incorrect. Young man from China. The young man from China. Yeah, the young man from China came to Christ, right? Um, and then, you know, how easy was it in movie number two for the teacher to just walk away from that? How easy would that have been for her to walk away from that? But yeah, she put her whole career in the line for Jesus Christ because of her strong faith. And through that, the little girl comes to Christ, right? So, so... From, the, from, from, from watching the movies just alone on those perspectives and how God works in mysterious ways and how people put, have to put the trust in God no matter how bad or, 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 oh, this is not realistically to do this, but, but still put your trust in God. And at the end, you still get the happy ending. It's, 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 as, and I see as a Christian, I enjoyed the movie, but I can see how you are saying as a non-believer how it would stir things up and not really bring people to Christ. But as a Christian, knowing the power that God has, knowing that that is possible for him to do those things that happen in those movies, mm -hmm. for that alone, I enjoyed the movies. Well, I will say that I, I will tell you, and uh, while I'm up on my soapbox there, that I think it's, it's more important for a quote-unquote Christian movie to have a higher standard of excellence than another movie. I mean, Marvel Avengers or whatever other movie, which by the way, I've never seen uh, any of those, whatever, they can have a haha, -ha, funny action, whatever for a couple hours and you can go away going, eh, it wasn't that great. But I think when you have a Christian movie that's kind of pushed into the mainstream like that, it needs to have a little bit of more of a standard of biblical basis and uh, faith-based uh, ex kind of excitement where you want you want to make people interested rather than you want to make the non-Christian interested rather than angry. And I, I think maybe the first one, maybe you could, I could give you a couple of points. I think two and three, they're just walking away going, what is that? We don't persecute the church that way. And, and I don't think they do. I, I just think it's, I think it's really off base. You know, there was, they, what I think what they were trying to do is take headlines from, from things around the country and kind of blow them out of proportion. That's, that's what they story. did. Because they showed, they showed at the end, especially for number three, they showed all the all the churches that went through that. And if you look at it, you, it's if a lot you actually of research it, it's really, really not. I it's mean, not, yeah, right. They showed that a minister was getting arrested for not turning in his sermon notes. That was like one little county in I forget what state it was in, but like it was like a mayor or something who asked for them, and then was basically the mayor got slapped for being you know, that's not constitutional. You can't do that. Nobody was arrested. Nobody actually had to turn him in. Nobody got in trouble. It was, you know, so there's a little bit, very little bit of truth in there, but I, I don't think it's actually going on. Yeah, I guess I'm able to take all the stuff that you say is false out of it and just focus on a little bit of truth and enjoy the so, movie. You know, see, so like Dave, like when I first watched God's Not Dead, 
See, you walked out of there and you didn't like it. See, when I w first watched it, I texted a couple people and well, put God's not dead. Just right, like the oh, 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 look, look, look. So here's 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says to test everything and accept the good and throw away the evil. <laughs> well, that's, that's easy to say, except my, my point would be a Christian can test every test everything and throw away uh, throw away the evil. But right. my point is, what happens when the non-Christian watches? They don't know they throw away the evil. They're just oh, going, yeah, wow, people are lacking. Yeah. But Jason, to, to address your point, and by the way, I do agree with Kerry Willis where he says Sean's getting ready to give us some wisdom. I, I, I do see some wisdom coming from Sean. He's been way too quiet. But Jay, Jay, I agree with you. The first movie was a little bit inspirational. Had some. The third movie I went to see with our team group. And I remember thinking when we were leaving with, with these dozen teens, what are they leaving thinking about the world? They thinking that they're, they're going to go out there and, you know, and they're going to get bricks thrown at them for trying to share their faith. I don't think that's the world we live in. I really don't. I share my faith every day. And 99% of the time, I get positive responses for doing it. But see, you know? see, the problem is, too, though, See, I looked at it different, and that's where, like, Tom was saying about, like, taking good and evil. And so, like, for me, one of the biggest things was looking looking at that. I, like, when I watched the beginning of that, and when that – I we didn't know that, that brick was thrown and what actually happened and how that Jude had got murdered. I mean, we saw the explosion and stuff. See, I don't know if you all watch that. See, I do because I was in jail, and I'm thinking this guy's getting railroaded for something that he never meant to hurt anybody. So that kid, when he threw that brick, and they actually showed in the middle of the movie or three quarters in, it hitting that gas pipe. That whole time, me and my have been in jail mentality. Here's somebody that's in trouble. For something that I didn't even see the brick or what happened with that blowing up, just knew something happened. Here's people that actually something happened, and this guy, the kid did not mean to cause that pipe to get hit, and it got hurt. But here, I'm looking at that dumb one little thing. You're, you're thinking about all this Christianity stuff, and I'm thinking about this poor kid is – fighting with Christ and being forgiven for something we weren't even shown in the movie right away what happened. You probably weren't paying attention to that. I'm sitting there going, this poor kid was coming to Christ, battling with this female that he had love for. She's fighting for him. And then they showed that brick hitting that piece of pipe and that poor man went down and we know if you really want to get all typical, that light probably wouldn't have blown that gas that far because it just didn't yeah. Happen. That's that, that's my that's my last point is <laughs> is it's like they gave these guys a big budget and told them, hey, we need a script in a day because and that script needed four more drafts to actually be believable. <laughs> but uh, Sean, why don't you whack us with some wisdom here, and then we'll move on to uh, to the next one. All right, so. My takeaway, and this is, this is my takeaways from the movie. And, and the first one, the important thing to take away from that movie was the young man's faith to stand with God against the world as opposed to standing with the world against God. His girlfriend yeah. turned her back on him to go with the school like, and go with what everybody – she told him, don't fight for God. Who cares? Like, in 20 years, we're going to have a family and we're going to have kids and you won't even think about this, but she was willing to take on – god against the world yeah trust me i'd rather i'd much rather stand with <laughs> the other thing that was taken away from that movie is the fact that our interactions with people on a daily basis as a christian that should bring people to christ they should know christ because of how we are because they see christ in us and that's the important things that i took away from that movie it didn't matter that the teacher was was trying to push his agenda on the kid it didn't matter that you know, all the other stuff in the background, the importance was standing in your faith and having interactions that are Christ-like on a daily basis to bring people to Christ. Like you said, the, 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 the young man from China would have had no interaction with anybody 
of Christian faith, except that he went to school. Even his dad was like, what are you, like the dad showed up and smacks him for even mm-hmm. talking about being, I mean, he, he flew from China just to smack him, like you're disowned because he had, you know, he, you know, because he, he thought about yeah, it because the kid, God. he got that seed and it was being planted and it was being watered and it was being nurtured. And, you know, they couldn't understand that. So, like I said, for me, number one, the takeaway is make your interactions effective for Jesus. And stand in your faith. Stand with God against the world. The second one, um, I, I think they, they hit, hit it big with the first one, and the second one came along. And I think, again, it, the takeaway was stand in your faith with what you believe. And, it, again, she – was she persecuted in the movie? Absolutely. Like, it was crazy persecution, in my opinion. Does it happen? I'm sure it probably happens somewhere around the world. Uh, I, I don't hear about it. I don't know about it. But to stand in your faith. But I think when they pitched that movie, when they were pr- promoting that movie, it was watch the movie because Melissa Joan Hart's in it, who was C- Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And yes. to me, like, you try to pull a big name Hang on. in. By the way, did you notice the judge was from Ghostbusters? Was he? I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah. The whole movie, the whole movie. That's what I kept telling Lisa. I ain't afraid of no ghost. But I, I think you know, trying to, to stand on your faith. I think that was the important part in that movie to take away. Again, I think some of the side stories and the takeaways. Again, it was too much. But they're trying to make a money, uh, make money, and make a movie. So, you know, take away like, like Lizette said, take away the good and let the bad go. Now, the third movie, I I'm in a hundred percent agreements with you, Dave. Yeah, the third movie, um, but. I still have a take a good takeaway with it, but I do agree it was a cash grab. It was uh, they they tried everything in their power to make money, but my takeaway was and it and it's it's perfect for a time right now that we're in. Us doing this show, the church being online, reaching out. At the end of that movie, his vision from God was it's not about the church building. It doesn't matter where the building is, because God's going to be in the building no matter where it's at. So him being so fixated on the church building itself. And, you know, my dad built this church, his grandfather built the church or whatever. And him so fixated on the building, it's got nothing to do with the building. The building has nothing to do with it. It, It's all about where God is in it and how you're promoting God through it. So I think that was my big takeaway on the third one was him coming to the realization is that it's got nothing to do with the building. It's everything to glorify God. I think my overall point was I realized that as a Christian, I can watch the movie separate the good from the bad and take away something positive. I do have the ability to do that. But my concern was that how, how is the non-believer being impacted by the movie? One, the, the first movie, yeah, it's got some spirit, spiritual stuff where like God works in mysterious ways and, and, you know, all things come together for like, okay, you know, that's cool. But two and then definitely three was, I just thought they were going to leave with a re- pretty bad taste in their mouth for, for how Christians act and, and overreact and that sort of thing. But that's, I mean, that's just me. So I basically mean, at the end of the day, if you want to look at it that way, everything that we do, we can never worry about the outcome. We just got to put it in God's hands. Right. So no, you know, that's it, that brother. If, if this movie reached any people out there, that that's, that's not the, we can't. Yeah, really but you that. have to be careful about how you say that. And I'm not trying to attack your statement, but I could just say, Hey, I'm going to go home, drink three liters of vodka, jump in my car, and I'll let God worry about the outcome. We'll just pray about it. You know, there's still, as a Christian, you still have some responsibility to the rest of the world and how you're going to treat them. Uh, so, okay. So, so I think we've, I, we've covered that. I told Sean that I didn't like Christian movies because of that. And he said, go watch War Room. And so we turned on War Room and I go, okay, here's going to be another poorly written badly acted movie a, a fluff piece about you know uh about what is this it's what is a, that a symbol from the movie oh okay so it's going to be a fluff piece and a poorly written poorly acted we turn on war room and all my expectations of christian movies were completely shattered and i ended up 35 minutes into that movie, I think the first Fine. tier came. The first tier came. Well, I mean, because allergies got into my the, – the, the pollen got into my house last night while we were watching that. 
And that so the attack pollen that you never expect. It was the it was the it was the eleven o'clock at night attack pollen while the movie was, and I'm like, wow, that's weird. The murder and bees hit pretty much, I pretty much balled the whole second half of that movie. That was what a fantastic, what a that fantastic is absolutely movie. one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in my top three uh, of all time movies. Um, and man, that that movie blew me away when I watched it for the first time. Um, mainly, and this is a point I want to hit on, mainly because at that point in my life, I was still fairly new to my Christianity. And that line in the middle of the movie where she gives that woman the cup of coffee that's been sitting on the counter all day. I got to ask you, did you see that coming? Did you see that? The warm coffee? The group yeah. warm coffee? I did not. And I didn't know I, the verse was, scripture I, before that. And I had to look I it saw up after in the that. back of the scene, I saw I saw her grab a coffee, a different coffee pot, and I told Lisa, I said, something pretty funny is about to happen. Yeah, I mean, I did catch it as she was doing it. I'm like, why does she have two different coffee pots? But, you know, when you look at it afterwards, like, I had to go look it up because I'm like, what is she talking about? Because it was all brand new to me. But to see how important it was, like, when she's talking about, you know, God doesn't want you lukewarm. You're either in or you're out. Like some people like their coffee hot. Some people like their coffee warm or uh, cold. Nobody drinks their coffee at room temperature. I might be the only person in the world that actually likes their coffee that way. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> me and Tom, go, Dave. I gotta um, have mine blazing hot. But yeah, me too, Tom. The importance of it. And then to, to know that it comes straight out of scripture is just amazing. And just the way – I pray to have faith like Miss Clara in that movie. I mean, she, she is a true she prayer warrior. Nailed it, she's man. One of my, she, she, that character, she's amazing. Well, I just love that, that she – I love the whole – I love the whole – first of all, even the comedy stuff where she goes, this is my third favorite room. It's the sitting room. And <laughs> what are you doing here? Mainly we sit. <laughs> you know, but I just love her whole re – my mom's a prayer warrior. And I, and I could totally see my mom and her and, and that sort of thing where the, she gets giddy when she gets that phone call. I've been praying about this for years, but she gets that phone call that her prayer was answered. She gets giddy. She's dancing around the house. It's so true. The react, like she nailed it. Oh, yeah. we got you. Oh, Debo, you ain't beaten me yet. Yes. <laughs> My prayers are answered. Woo, yep. Tom, you got that one. <laughs> and that, I mean, that just gave, I thought that, it, I mean, beginning to end, they nailed. The per, they nailed. I'm watching, yeah. Yeah, I know. So I'm watch, I can see it in the other screen. I'm like. You see it in the other screen. You see Jay, like, delayed dancing. No, like, the, wait, where was it? Where was it that you got teary? At what part? You know, I think the first part for me, and this is what I, I think there's perfect transition, Tom, because I was just about to mention that. The part for me, because uh, I haven't given my testimony yet, but there was a point in my life where I was, I knew who, the person of God. I knew the person of Jesus, um, but I was very, very lukewarm, uh, probably towards cold, you know, um, and I was a deadbeat husband. I really was. I was, I was. I was. I was a deadbeat husband, and so the first part that got me was when he comes home, and he goes into that closet and sees that she knows who he is, that his wife knows who he is oh, and doesn't care and been praying for him. That's it. And so that was the part where he's this. He's just the. There's. I mean, I'm. I'm trying to use a clean word here, and I'm not coming up with one. He's just a dog not a good guy he's just a dog he's just a selfish selfish you know person and he just sees that i'm not pulling the wool over her eyes this is god working in her and she's still loving me that to me was so powerful and then that's when his life starts to change and it all started because miss clara made a mistake way back when and god got her out of it and then god through her showed another woman how to pray and through that started to change her husband and started to heal a family and started to bring them all back to Christ. 
to me, I mean, that's where the tears started, and then they just kept going and kept going. And kept yeah, that's when I, when I, when he first walked into that room, I thought he was going to flip out when he saw the prayers on the wall. And then what happened after that? I just lost it. And I started thinking oh. of me, of God dying for me, and how I'm not worthy because he felt the same way. His wife is praying for him, and he's out there talking to chicks. Lost it. Lost it. I love the scene when the wife is going through the high, the house, chasing the devil out the yes. house. Bro, I, I was on the, I was up like, yeah, get out of the house, devil, leave now. I, oh my goodness. She played that so on. She's on the porch just screaming that he can't have her family. He can't have her life. He can't have her daughter. He can't have her husband. That was like the first time I had ever seen somebody that passionate besides Pete um, <laughs> about, you know, trying to make their life better for Christ. And that was just so powerful, such an emotional moment where she's literally like running through her house, just like literally screaming the devil out of her house, like chasing Satan straight out of her house. She was so bought in for Christ. That was such an amazing, powerful moment for me. I like that. So, I like what Bonnie writes there. It puts us all to shame about our prayer life. It does. Yeah. Really, it, it checked me, man. And that was my, my grandma is that same way and um i actually have another little bit of a jail story my buddy jake curry who i went to liberty ministries with um i actually had seen the movie war room and i had got moved in montgomery county and paul long who watches us and god bless him he's a he's an awesome man um he uh I walked into my new cell when I got transferred and I looked down and I saw the book war room and my buddy Jake let me watch it, uh, read it. And next thing you know, we just passed it around our cell and everybody just read the book and it went around the whole block and everybody became loved that book. Like they all wanted to be like that woman. Like just to, to understand that prayer, like just everybody started praying. We're praying together. It was just amazing. And that's why I ended up getting this tattoo because what people don't understand is yes, it was a jail pluck, but it's to be right with God. And that's what I, I watched risen the other day, which we'll get into maybe another week. But one oh, thing, we, one thing we forget is Everybody wears the cross as a symbol on your neck or on your tattoo or whatever. But what it is, is that vertical is, and that's what this, the, the war room, it actually has a, I have a book on it and everything in it. This is to keep God in your sight, always in your sight, but be vertical. That vertical is to be one with God. That's the vertical cross part. Then the next is the horizontal. When he was hung there horizontally, that is the bridge to bring everybody from that crap that we were in to where God wants us to be. It might be a poopy old movie like God's Not Dead, and, and, and you might not like this part of it, but if it brought this person that understands this side of it, that's what brings us together and makes us strong. And that's, that's what, that's why this tattoo, it looks like crap because it's a pluck. But you know what? And that's the worst tattoo feeling I ever had. I mean, I had a lot, I hate needles, but I, I had all these tattoos. But that, that pluck, they literally take a staple and put it in a pen and, and dab ink and just, you can hear the, it took me two hours and three trays that I couldn't eat three trays, but you know what? It brought me to Christ. Thank you, Carrie, for putting that cross up because that is Man. that horizontal and that vertical. That's what, that's what brings us together. And that's mm. what people forget. We want to wear, we want to wear a cross around our neck and say, I'm one with God, but they can't say any. That's why I, Amy bought me a beautiful cross. And so did my dad and my stepmom. I don't wear it anymore because that's not that it's not what I'm about. 
I, 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 I really, I really have to talk about it. And I don't think I have enough time to talk all the time. If somebody would ask me about that, that can, why I wear it. Can I bring up one more, one more part of that movie that was probably, um, I mean, we all remember it, but it might've been, the point might've been missed about was that after he started praying, after he lost his job, after he hit bottom and he was on his way back up, I don't remember the guy's name, but um, when he was on his way back up, God convicted him. Remember that in the garage, he, he convicted him that you've been doing something illegal and I want you to make it right. That, that was actually a big part of my testimony too. I'd been doing something, Jay knows a little bit about this. I'd been doing something illegal and um, God was telling me, it wasn't on any scale like dealing drugs or whatever, or selling drugs, but God kind of convicted me, hey, I have control of your life right now and I want you to go make this right. And I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And, and what God had to do then was hit me in the back of the head really hard. Um, and then I was able to, to make some stuff right. But <laughs> I think that's really important to be able to listen to God. And one thing that I'm going through right now is I've been waking up in the middle of the night. At least it doesn't even know this. she'll find this out when she listens to this Facebook live. I've been waking up in the middle of the night and just been praying. God, just use me. Just tell me what you, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. And I think that's important for all of us to do is just like when God tells you what to do, just do it. Just be open, be willing to do it. And, and that's what you saw there was a guy who had a lot of pride. who was just starting to be broken before God and be rebuilt. And I think we have to be broken before he can rebuild us. That was, I mean, uh, Sean, that was a powerful movie. I appreciate you telling me to go watch that. I, I'm going to watch that probably once a month for the next couple. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good to hear, Dave, that you're getting up in the middle of the night and doing that because. I'm not getting, uh, Tom, I'm not getting up in the middle of the night. I'm waking up in the middle of the night. And that's what yeah. gives me the peace to go back to sleep. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, God, I just I want feel you it in me. my heart that God has something in plan for you that we all don't know yet. And I'm excited to find out what that is. Cool. All right. So here's what I need. You guys suggested a great movie. What's the next one I need to watch? Cause I am, I'm a noob at this. I don't know any of these movies. Risen. Risen's good. Courageous. God's I've compass. Seen. God's compass. That's the next one I'm doing. God's compass. It has Miss Clara and Tony in it from God, um, war room. Um, it's a great movie. I haven't seen that one. It's another really good, powerful movie uh, about redemption. You've Real seen good. it, uh, Jason? Of course. Jason's seen every single Christian movie that's ever been made. Listen, you could, probably couldn't put one on here that I probably haven't seen yet. When I yeah, got started, I'm, there. I'm a huge movie person. Like I try to watch every movie that comes out. And when I got on Christian movies, man, I couldn't get enough of them. Uh, even the cheesy ones, like the bad, grainy video, um, all of it, all the stories of redemption, all the ones I've seen, I mean – Obviously, the first three movies we talked about tonight, can you can look at with a with a through the microscope and scrutinize and tear apart and do whatever you want to do. But a lot of these other movies that that we that I've watched and seen are definitely one hundred percent based in faith. And you guys have to you have to get you have to get pure flicks. Um, Listen, look, look at the movies coming in. God wakes us up. God, uh, God bless the broken road. Awesome movie. Unspoken. Awesome movie. Overcomer. Amazing movie, uh, Facing the Giants. I just watched that two nights ago. One hey, of my other favorites. Dave, um, facing what? What? Uh, Sean, what's the one we said about? Uh, we have to watch the best, the best um, scene ever with the kid carrying him on the back. Was that? Well, oh, facing, facing the Giants. Facing, facing, facing the, the Giants. Giants with the. Give me ten more yards. Ten more steps. Give me your very best. Give me your Dave, very best. Dave, Amazing did you look movie. that up? Most powerful line I've ever seen. Um, Dave, Paul, the Dave, apostle. You get off here. Christ. You need to look that up. All right, guys, get to a consensus here. Give me a movie. We're just God's, God's compass. compass. God's compass. God's yeah. compass. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. That's the next one on my list. Give, All right, give, guys. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just see what no, you got. No, no, Risen. Right. I was just gonna go ahead. Risen. Are we still throwing movies out? Is that what we're doing? He said, said he wants to. 
Have you seen the? I said three. One movie? I, no, I said one. No, one. Said, yeah, you gotta do three. You gotta do three. I said one movie. You gave me five. You can't count. He'll pick three out of the five. <laughs> Listen, Dave. I'll email you later with the whole list. I'll give you a whole playlist to go with. All right. Let's do that. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> there's a lot of them i just watched one the other day for the first time i i'd wanted to see it and i hadn't watched it it made a lot more sense now um interview with god okay i seen that um i was kind of blown away like it, the way they did it and the way they told the story i i was pretty impressed i actually i really i i, I wanted to see it when it first came out and i didn't go see it and then i got it on dvd and it sat on the shelf for like a year and i just finally watched it and it was actually really awesome Hey, Pastor Kerry said, yeah, Paul, the Apostle of Christ, that's, that's good a one. good one. That's a really good one. That's a good one. All I'm right, let's get to the prayer all these comments and watch all those movies. All right, guys, <laughs> let's, uh, if anybody's got prayer requests, please feel free to pop them on there. I saw uh, for the I saw one up. I saw, I saw, I thought I only saw one or so. Oh, Case for Christ, Lizette, that's another good one. Uh, I saw right. for soldiers. Um, I didn't see any other proof. It looks like it. Just for the soldiers is all I've seen so far. I actually have to talk to. Um, I have to talk to the guy from Liberty Ministries. A bunch of those guys actually know um, some of the uh, RAs there, and uh, they know a lot of those guys that were in those movies. Um, they're very Christian and they will actually meet and they've been to Christian stuff in Pennsylvania and they come out and they've met them and they know them personally. I'd love to try to see if we can get them on. Like we're going to have Pastor Kerry on the interview and stuff. Love to have those guys on and see if we can get them to talk with us. But those guys are very open and that man, that'd be amazing to try to talk to those guys. Yeah. Pastor Kerry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this next week because I want some clarification. You posted now twice about Princess Bride. <laughs> I love the movie. So I'm hoping next week you'll explain why you've posted it uh, a couple of times now. I guess we have to watch it. Well, I'm going to have to watch it again now before we go because it's going to have to be a, a question I bring up next week. Yeah, well, the Princess <laughs> Bride is a movie. We, when I used to work at the church camp, that was Princess Bride was like one of the only movies we had in the library. So the staff used to watch that like three times a week. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a movie I used to watch in a Christian location. <laughs> but All right. That's all right well, we, we're only 13 minutes over. Yeah, I mean, that's all not right. Let me run around. The, uh, I'm not, I'll keep looking for ones coming up on the screen. But Tom, what you got this week? Uh, I got the um, the homeless. <laughs> All right, I got you, Dave. Where are you at? I think the same prayer request, just that God would just use us, and we'd be use me, use us, and be uh, be willing to say yes when He does. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Jay, what you got for me, bud? I want a prayer for. An unspoken name, um, but for the addicts and the people we're losing to being stuck home, doing whatever they're doing because they have nothing else to do, I pray they can get to the place that I am in life, get away from the stuff, and um, get their lives straightened up. All right. All right. Let's go to him in prayer. Father God, we are so, so happy to be in your presence this evening, Lord. I just am so blessed that you've brought this together. My brothers here that I get to be with every week, all these Amen. folks that get to come on and share this with us, this amazing journey that you put us on, Lord. And we just pray that whatever you are working through this, Lord, you would continue to work this Show us day more. in and day out. Use us for your glory, Lord. Everything that you want. Show us, allow us to do that for you. Lord, we do have some things going on right now here in the world, Lord. Um, there are a lot of people out there struggling. You know this. So we want to bring them to you because we know that you'll heal those people. You'll be with them. You'll comfort those folks. Show them your love, Lord. Lord, we are losing too many people, not just to COVID, but just to themselves, to their own minds, because they haven't found you, Lord. Give them peace, Lord. Give them strength, Lord. Lord, 
we know, we know you're with the homeless, Lord. We know you are providing for them. We saw that this weekend, Lord. We were just so excited to be there to do your work, Lord, and to see that when things were starting to get low, that you provided time and time again. Amen. So, Lord, with those folks. Send them more away, Lord. Lord, for all the unspoken requests, for everything that anybody's not willing to post right now, anything that anybody is not willing to speak about right now, Lord, you know that. In your heart, you know those prayer requests, Lord. Be with those folks. Give them the comfort they need. Give them the wisdom they need. Be over Give them the them, guidance Lord. they need, Lord. And Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you. For every single thing that you've done that's brought me these gentlemen and everybody watching right now to this Amen. particular moment, Lord, you had this plan since the beginning. Thank you for saving you brought me. it to fruition. And Lord, I am just so happy just to be a part of all that you've done and all that you continue to do. So Lord, we're just here to give you thanks. We're Thank here to you. praise your name. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jason! All right, Jay, you're up, buddy. <laughs> oh, you know that one. I forgot to put everything down. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. 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 God bless everybody. Thank you. See you so all much. next week with Pastor Kerry Willis, our district servant. See you guys. Looking forward to it. Love y'all.